fight? Or should I call you brother? What? It's over. Time for you to put aside the gun and live. Proxy AIs that came after him were convinced that Solidus was me. I was implanted with nanomachines, kept in a state of eternal sleep by JD and the Proxy AI. They had me sealed away completely, not only my physical body, but my will too. The technology was similar to what they used to restrain the B&B &B members you encountered. For me to wake again, the system had to be destroyed. One way or another. Ocelot and Eva wanted two things. To bring me back to life, and to end the Patriots. That meant destroying the AI and killing the man. JD and Zero. Right before you uploaded the virus into GW, the way to JD was opened, but only through the physical manifestation of GW. That's when we finally learned the location of this man, Zero. For me, and for them, for Naomi, nothing was more important. And it was for that that they put their grand scheme into motion. Eva stole my body from them and reconstructed it by replacing the missing parts with pieces from liquid and solidus. And Ocelot, in order to fool the system, used nanomachines and psychotherapy to transplant Liquid's personality onto his own. He used hypnotic suggestion to turn himself into Liquid's mental doppelganger. For all our advances in nanotechnology, information and genetic control, they've never managed to control people at will, let alone turn one person totally into another. Under certain conditions, someone can be made to play a specific role. Act like someone else. Cats do love to play as snakes. It all started with him. Zero. Zero grew old, and by the end, his patriots were being run by a network without shape or form. What do you mean, without shape or form? The proxies were only one small part of the vast cycle that Zero created. The corporations, for-profits, and research institutions that comprise the military-industrial complex were part of it, too. 
They operated on budget automatically allotted to them by the proxies. Accounts maintained by the Patriots. The network covered everything from weapons, R&D, and investment to production and marketing. It encompassed the people, the companies, even the laws that protect them. Politics and economics became nothing more than iterations of the same oppressively uniform system. I don't think anyone realized that it was all a setup, a mere set of norms. The Patriots were those norms, a neural network reduced to its simplest form. That's what they really represented. Uniformity without individual will, without change. But then one day, those norms suddenly deviated from that pattern and underwent a mutation. It was like the birth of a new life form. The system found a new way to propagate itself. War. The norms the Patriots had crafted for their unified state quickly became dependent on a single business, the war economy. Meanwhile, the political cause of creating a cleaner, safer battlefield provided a convenient catalyst. By then, the system was no longer being steered by Zero's will or anyone else's. It was then that the norms manifested as AIs, the inheritors of Zero's will, began to reproduce and take on a life of their own. Zero's original intent was to carry on the boss's will and establish a unified world state, an inside world. But his successors failed to carry on his will. Eventually, JD became the very age itself propagating its will as it pleased, and this age chose to act through economics instead of nation-states. Powered by the industrial and digital revolutions that came before it, this age gave birth to a twisted economic revolution, a battlefield revolution. It created a new world without substance. In this new world, there were no ideologies, no principles, no ideals, not even the thing she treasured most, loyalty. There was only the war economy. It was a colossal error in judgment, one zero couldn't possibly have foreseen. With the American system in a state of collapse, Patriot society has reverted to a blank slate. This man was the source of it all. And he doesn't even realize it. He's completely unaware of the fact that he led the world to the brink of ruin. Even with so much bad blood between us, it's funny now that I'm actually face to face with him again. The hatred is gone. All I feel is a deep sense of longing and pity. Did Zero really hate me? Or did he fear me?